Hey, this is Allison from Computers.Mom, and this video will introduce you to the Control Center, one of the most useful features of your iPhone or iPad, because we've found that many people don't even realize they have it, and they're missing out. If you use an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod Touch, Control Center gives you instant access to many of the settings and apps you use the most, so you don't have to waste time hunting for them. Let's take a look at what it can do for you. The only slightly tricky part is getting to the Control Center in the first place. There are two different ways to open it. On an iPhone without a home button, and most iPads, place your finger at the far upper right corner of your screen and swipe diagonally down and across the screen like this. On an iPhone that has a home button, an iPod Touch, or some older iPads, start with your finger below the screen and swipe up from the bottom like this. It might take a few tries to get the hang of it, so be patient. If one method doesn't seem to work, try the other one. You have nothing to lose. Once you get it right, you'll see a panel of controls like this, and the rest of the screen goes dim. If you want to close it again, just tap the dimmed out part of the screen, anywhere except on the control buttons. Now that you know how to get to the controls, if you're the adventurous type, you can play around with the control buttons yourself and see what they do, or stick around for a quick tour of the most useful controls and some tips and tricks on using them. Here's the control center on an iPad and an iPhone side by side. As you can see, most of the controls are the same on both devices, like the camera button right here and here. But some will only appear if your device supports them. This iPad is Wi-Fi only, so it doesn't have the cellular control that you see here on the iPhone. And it's an older model, so it also lacks the very popular flashlight, which is right here on the iPhone. Many of the controls are toggles, meaning you just tap to turn them on or off. When I tap the flashlight, for example, you can see that the light goes on and the control's appearance changes to show whether it's on or off. Or tap Do Not Disturb to prevent calls and notifications from coming in when you need some peace and quiet. Notice that if it's on, you'll see a little moon icon below the battery icon up here so you know you're in Do Not Disturb mode. Let's take a closer look. Here's the control I probably use the most, Rotation Lock. When it's locked like this, if I turn my device sideways, the display does not rotate. So for example, if I want to read lying down on my side, the rotation lock keeps my book in the vertical direction, so it's easy to read even when my device is horizontal. When it's unlocked like this, the screen will rotate with the device, and images expand or contract to fill the available space. Screen mirroring lets you take whatever's on the screen of the device and play it on another compatible device like an Apple TV. Tap outside the control to go back. This whole group of controls lets you turn on and off different kinds of connections. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular if your device has it, and AirPlay, which lets you share photos and stuff to other Apple devices, and of course, AirPlay mode. There's a mini music player up here, and then other controls are just quick shortcuts to apps like silent mode, a timer, notes, and so on. Some of the controls are sliders, like volume and screen brightness. Drag your finger on them to make adjustments. Let's skip the finger here so it's not blocking your view of the control. Same goes for the brightness control. Keep in mind, by the way, that increasing your screen brightness uses up your battery a lot faster. Here is the best trick in Control Center. Many of the controls have additional options if you long press on them. That is, just hold your finger down on them for a moment. For example, Long press on the camera button to get a menu of popular options like taking a selfie or recording a video. Since you don't even have to unlock your screen, it's faster and easier to go through Control Center than to open the camera app and fiddle around with the settings. Long press here and then slide to set a timer for up to two hours, let's say for a parking meter. Now that you know how to get to the Control Center and operate the controls, we encourage you to take a few minutes to play around and figure out which ones are the most useful to you. If you want to take it to the next level and customize the Control Center, we have a video for that too. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments and questions below. Click like if you found this useful and don't forget to subscribe for more Computers.mom videos.